Hi, this is Mrs. Zhu, and today we're working on, this is lesson nine, which is page 33 and 34, and for homework you're doing 35 and 36, homework eight. For this lesson, we're still continuing what we've been talking about yesterday. We're looking at equations. So the first question is going to begin with writing an equation. And please spend the time to read over the worksheet first before you watch the video with me so that you know what to do so I don't have to stop and pause and reread everything. Now, since in this question we've got that Jackson is building seven birdhouses in five hours, to represent it in an equation, remember that the equation that we took notes in our foldable today is y equals kx. We are going to say that our x is going to stand for hours and y will stand for the birdhouses, which means that we need to find k, which is our constant of proportionality. When we are looking for that, the constant of proportionality is actually equal to y over x. So here it's going to be the number of birdhouses divided by the hours. I want to know how many birdhouses I'm building in like per hour. So I've got seven birdhouses per five hours. So seven over five. I could, if I want, I can change it to a mixed fraction, one and two fifths, or I can write it as a decimal and write 1.4. Now two fifths is the same as 1.4 because if I divide two with five, like that, I get 0.4. So that's why it's 1.4. But I'm just simply going to write the equation y equals 7 fifths times x. Or you can write it as a decimal or a mixed fraction. I'm going to choose to keep it as the ratio that I've written where birdhouses is 7 and 5 is the hours so that I can see that clearly. How many birdhouses can Jason build in 40 hours? I can actually use a proportion to set up that problem. Since it takes seven birdhouses, take five hours, so birdhouses and hours, then I can create a second ratio that represents X number of birdhouses out of the 40 hours. Then we can see that there's a direct relationship, five to 40, seven to something. These are proportional. So if I were to create a ratio that was x over 40, then I could take 5 and multiply it by 8 to get 40. And I can take 7 times 8 because I have to multiply by the same number in my numerator and denominator and I'll get 56. So the number of birdhouses that I need is 56 birdhouses. I will always box my answers. Let me go back to highlight that for us so we know. Now, of course, that's not the only way to find out that that's how long or that's how many birdhouses he has, but it would definitely be the most direct way and easiest way just to see that. And so we created a proportion. Let us see how long will it take Jackson to build 35 houses. Again, we can set up a proportion. Keep the seven birdhouses in five hours. Make that equal to X number of birdhouses. And instead of 40 hours, we've got 35. Oh, I'm sorry. I've got 35 birdhouses. If I put 35 here for birdhouses, then I'm going to look for X number of hours. Okay, and again, we see a nice relationship from 7 to 35, which is if I multiply it by 5, I get 35. And 5 times 5 would then mean that the number of hours it's going to take me is 5 times 5, which is 25 hours. And again, if I do go fast, go ahead and rewind. Try it yourself if you're thinking, oh my gosh, I could definitely try this myself before she goes over the answer. That would be fine. D, how long will it take to, oh, use an equation for part A to solve the problem? Okay, we can definitely use the equation. We can um, actually use the equation instead of a proportion. So I can use y equals 7 fifth times x. Now because they're giving me the number of birdhouses and y is the number of birdhouses, I can just plug that 
35 into there okay and use that of you know we are beginning with a lesson in the proportions and ratios that I haven't had a chance to review with you solving equations but if you are solving this equation for X and since X is the number of birdhouses then we'll be able to find the answer for I'm sorry X is the number of hours then we'll find how many hours it's going to take so if I were to do the inverse of multiplying by a fraction what I would have to do is to multiply by the reciprocal And that's how I would use an equation to solve this. I would solve this fraction just like that. I would multiply 31 over 1 times 35 over 1 times 5 over 7. The I can cross cancel and get 1 and 5, which is just give me 5 times 5, which is 25, and 1 times 1, which is 1, which is the same thing as saying 25. So again, I'm getting the same answer. Make sure you label the hours. I think that the proportion actually will be the easiest way to solve this problem right now so I didn't choose to use an equation but that's how you would do it so as you do letter D why don't you try to use a proportion if you would like to challenge yourself to use an equation you can I think it's a little more difficult since that's not what we have been the way we've been uh, doing that in class we've been using mostly proportions so for number letter D, the way we would set it up, again, we would keep 7 over 5 because that's the ratio that they gave us. And then since we've got 71 birdhouses and I'm looking for the number of hours, my second ratio would be 7 over X. I could, um, now for this one, 7 times something cannot give us 71. There's no even number. So instead, we have to use cross multiplication to solve. And we could have done that same thing here in C and B to find the answer. But it was much easier to just say 5 times 8 is 40, 7 times 8. Same here. 5 times 5 is 25, 7 times 5 is 35. It was much easier. So let's go ahead and cross multiply. 5 times 71 and then it's equal to 7 times x. So 5 times 71 is going to give us 355 that's equal to 7 times x. So if I look for something that times multiplies with 7 to get 355, I bring the 7 under the 355 and I'm going to use division because I will have to do the inverse. So here I'm going to divide and here I had used multiplication. So I'm going to take 355 and divide it with 7 and that's going to equal my x. Okay, now you're going to get a decimal answer, and when you get your decimal answer, 355 divided by 7, you're going to have 50.71, okay, now that is going to represent how much time, so we'll just estimate and say it's about 50, and we're going to round to the tenths, that's going to be just a little more accurate, 0.7 hours. Good. let's go to the back of the worksheet we have Al he produces he has a produce stand seven years of corn for a dollar fifty there's our first ratio that they gave us then he sells 13 of them for oh well Barbara has a stand and she sells 13 for 285 so we're gonna write two equations one for Barbara one for Al and then we're going to use the equations to finish the table. Okay, so our equation will both be y equals kx, y equals kx. Our x is going to be for both of them the ears of corn. And ears of corn just means each corn since we represent each corn, we call them ears. y is going to be the cost in dollars for both equations. Now we just have to find our k. So remember our k is going to be y over x and our k is going to be y over x. So the ears is x, the cost is y, ears is x and cost is y. So I'm kind of doing both side by side. So I'm going to take $1.50 here and divide it with 7. For, the, for Barbara's I'm going to take 285 and divide by 13. Now you are welcome to use a calculator when you're doing this. 
So I'm putting it into my calculator and I got a decimal uh, that was 0 0.214288 da, 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 da. Here I got that my K is equal to 285 divided by 13 which is going to give me 0 0.2192 da, 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 da. keep going and if I round because I'm looking at money I definitely want to round to this penny here and when I round to that penny I want to look at the number next to it on the right so I'm going to round this else to 0 0.21 since it's a 4 the 1 stays when I round so I've got 21 cents per ear of corn and for the second one for Barbara's I've got 0 0.22 since the 9 is bigger than 5 then the 1 is going to round up okay so here's their K now that's going to lead then to my equation so my equation for Al is 0.21x I'm simply taking the constant and I'm plugging it back into this equation. Same here, I'm taking this constant and plugging it back into the equation. So my equation is y equals 0.22x. That's Barbara's, Barb's, and this is Al's. So there's our equation. Now I'm going to use the equation to help me find the rest of the cost. So for every ear of corn at 21 cents, and of course it's a rounded answer, I'm going to use 14. I'm going to go ahead and take the 14 ears of corn and multiply it with 0 0.21. I'm using my calculator. So I did 0 0.21 times 14 and I got 2.94. Highlight that. Oops, sorry, I highlighted the wrong thing. And then I'm going to take 21 and multiply that by 0.21 and I'm going to get $4.41. I'm going to take $50. To fill out this blank right here, I'm going to take the $50 and I'm going to divide that by 0.21 and that's going to give me how many ears of corn, which are going to be 200 and 38 wow 238 let me highlight that for us too okay um, same thing over here I'm just going to multiply instead of 21 point 21 I'm going to multiply point 22 by 14 and I'm going to get three dollars and eight cents 21 times point 22 four dollars and sixty two cents and my last one I'm going to get about two hundred and twenty seven so let me highlight those answers for you I'm trying to show a little bit of work and go ahead and please make sure that you write down your periods secret code we've got pencils pens markers and erasers that is your secret code please work as much as you can on this worksheet for homework see you tomorrow